Hey everybody, welcome to Rogecast, the show where we specifically discuss nothing specific at all. I'm your host, Travis Kunze. Before we get into today's episode, I just want to take a brief moment to give you guys some updates, letting you know that the podcast will be launching on two new platforms in April, one of them being iTunes and the other one as a separate MP3 download directly off of our website. As well as that, we're going to be doing some social media and website updates in April that will offer more content as well as just a better visual appearance in general which is important if you want eye-catching uh, content. Uh, and then also, starting in April, I believe we are planning on producing more content, including vlogs, shorts, music videos, exploratory arts. We haven't really decided what that is yet, and other types of videos. And I also want to give a shout-out to everyone who has given comments and some constructive criticism to the podcast. We're trying some new things this episode, including a new microphone for me. We'll see how things sound if we need to go back to the old one. Hopefully you guys like it. Definitely feel free to continue commenting and you know, giving us your guys' ideas, your thoughts. We would love uh, topic ideas. If there's something you want to do specifically for a, uh, rather than a podcast, definitely feel free to let us know. So today we're going to be discussing faith in the workplace, which can be a semi-touchy subject for some people. Uh, but for my, for myself, I am a faith-based individual. I believe in a relationship with God and, uh, today's guest is Casey Weed. He works in IT support and he's an audio video director and a youth leader. And we shared the same, uh, general faith belief. So Casey, welcome to the show. Thanks. (laughs) So, uh, yeah. So faith in the workplace, that is definitely a more touchy subject. And I just want to let everyone know right away, we're not trying to push our beliefs on you guys, but we do want to cover the topic because we do cover a wide variety of topics. We're not afraid to discuss things. And it doesn't really matter what your faith is in. The question is, is is it appropriate to share that faith in the workplace or not? Um, you know, myself, I've had different jobs where I've had the opportunity to share my faith or people have questioned it and wanted to know more about it. Um, so, you know, the question is, is it appropriate to share it? And Casey, uh, have you really had the opportunity to share your faith in the workplace with your coworkers at all? Or, you know, what kind of, what's your company's overall policy in that? Um, I guess policy is kind of a good question. Um, I've never really come in contact with like bad situations of sharing your faith. Um, I've, I mean, my coworkers definitely know where I stand and, um, it's really nice for you when you're working at a place where your coworkers have a high respect for you um, as a as a Christian or an individual um, who really believes uh, that God came and he died for us or sent his son Jesus to die for us. But uh, where I work personally, I have a lot of people who are really respectable um, to me, which is nice because then you have um, a good way that you can kind of witness or share your faith in the workplace is when people know who you are and where you stand in your, your boldness and your faith is it kind of works in their lives too, in a way, um, not like directly sharing with them, but you know, um, if they, you know, are cussing, saying inappropriate things and they know that you don't agree with that right away in that moment, in that point in time, they're going to be, Oh, you know, Casey, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean that. Or, forgive me for swearing or sorry about that. And so then as they're around you, they start to not swear and not cuss or say inappropriate things or jokes. And then, you know, over the course of time, it starts to become more of a habit for them to try to watch their language where they're at. You have to forgive the pets in the background. (laughs) Um, But uh, as far as policies, I've never really had a time where I've been told you can't share your faith. You can't read your Bible. You can't, you know, talk about it or voice your opinion Um, because i mean wherever you go wherever you work everybody's going to be voicing their opinion everybody's going to be you know telling stories telling you where they stand oh i'm an atheist i'm baptist everybody's going to talk about it and um you know it's just i've I've never really run into bad policies either so yeah and that's awesome i I did it's definitely awesome that you have that openness about you. I know in the workplace where I work at the moment, um, when I'm not at the studio, we have a wide variety of people with faith and beliefs. We have, you know, myself, I follow the Christian beliefs. We have atheists, we have agnostics, we have Lutherans, we have Catholics. I mean, we have a huge variety. And the really cool thing is, is that while it's not always the topic of choice, 
it's interesting to see how each person lives their life differently. Um, I've had coworkers come up to me and go, there's something different about you. You're not like everyone else. Tell me about you. You know, tell me about yourself. Tell me what your background is. And that kind of opens like that doorway to share a little bit more about your faith. Because when someone introduce, you know, goes up to you and says, hey, tell me about yourself. They're asking for information. They're not, you know, going, oh, well, we don't want to know about that. I mean, sometimes you get that response. Um, I can think of one situation where we had, I had been reading my Bible before work and I was told, well, you can't technically bring books to work with you. And that didn't make any sense because they had literally the week before actually given us a book to keep at our desk for reading in between calls. And so it was kind of like, well, that doesn't make sense, but whatever. Um, so I chose to respect it. And it's, how, how do you, like, in your opinion, how do you fight that, un, I guess not unfairness, but that segregating of what you can and can't do, you know, saying, hey, you can't, you can, you can read, but you can't read this type of book. I mean, do you think... It's something that you should let go in the workplace, or do you think it's something that you might bring up with a manager or a leader in the workplace? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I think there's a point where you would need to draw the line. Um, like in a place of work, if my manager or my boss were to tell me, hey, you can't read your Bible, but you can read any other book, I think that I would kind of have to argue that a little bit because if you as an individual or Christian are reading your Bible, that's not affecting anybody besides yourself. And if you're not pushing that over, if you're not pushing, you know, Bible in people's faces and all that, if you're discreet, you're by yourself and you're not being disruptive or annoying with it, then definitely like you should, you have the right to be out there in, in reading your Bible. And, um, it really shouldn't be a problem. Um, but it's definitely unfair, but it, you know, there also comes a point where if they're going to push you and push you, then, you know, at the same time, we can, we can read our Bibles tons of other places too. And, um, I mean, you got breaks and stuff. You can go sit in your car and, uh, or, you know, go sit out at a, at a bench if it's nice outside or, but, you know, being a Christian, you know, there's multiple ways to communicate with the Lord rather than only reading your Bible. And you can be praying all day long as well. And, you know, nobody's going to notice. I mean, unless you're, you know, screaming out loud and yelling <laughs> in tongues or something. <laughs> yeah, people are going to notice and it's going to be disruptive. But, you know, I, I think that it's not fair. And, um, I mean, if you talk to somebody in the workplace who's telling you, no, you can't read your Bible in here, but you can read other books, um, most likely it's just a manager or leader who doesn't agree with that and they – maybe had a bad experience with it in the past or somebody who pushed it too far or, you know, it's, it's kind of a respect thing, but I, a lot of places you won't really come across that. Um, I mean, like you said, you had somebody who told you can't have books at that point. I probably wouldn't really argue it. I would just, you know, find a different faith-based book to read that doesn't have the word Bible plastered on the front of it or, you know, I, I, I guess I wouldn't argue it too much in that case, but I mean, if it were somebody who's really going to fight about it, then, you know, I, I wouldn't really try to make a big dramatic scene if I guess if that's what you're asking, but right. No, definitely. And I appreciate your, your thoughts on that. And I think for the most part, you're right on. Cause if, you know, if it, we have to kind of pick and choose that balance in life in general, what we're going to argue, what we're not, because there's multiple ways to also demonstrate your faith. There's, you know, demonstrating your faith by example and how you live your life. You can demonstrate your faith in uh, how you speak and sharing. And I think there comes a point where you have to decide, OK, I this isn't a big deal. I can like you said, you can read your Bible other times um, and in some honesty, work probably isn't the best place to be reading. And, you know, unless you have one of those jobs where you have tasks that you have gaps in between. And then I can kind of see, uh, you know, being able to read a book or browse the web or whatever it is you prefer to do. And yeah, I definitely I think you're right on with that. And so another question I have is, um, let's say you are with a coworker or you're in a group of coworkers and one of them just starts going off about being anti-God, anti-Jesus, anti-religion, um, you know, basically just attacking everything you believe in. How do you think the best way as a Christian is to respond to that? Do you think it's better to 
um, you know, sit back quietly, not really respond at all? Or do you think it's better to, you know, give your opinion, but giving it in a loving manner, not blowing up and, you know, basically starting an argument that's not going to lead anywhere? Um, I guess it depends on your maturity, where you are in your walk um, with God. I mean, if you're uh, a mature Christian, I mean, you're, you're probably going to state your opinion. If somebody's sitting there bashing everything you believe in, you know, be bold, be a positive Christian. God didn't call us to just sit on the sidelines and watch. He called us to step forward and make disciples and be vocal about ourselves in an appropriate manner. So if someone's sitting there bashing me about it, you know, I can't get all offensive and defensive and, uh, you know, bitter and rude and mean about it because that's basically saying, oh, this is what being a Christian is. It's getting mad about when people pick on me. But no, you need to you need to step forward. You need to be bold and just be confident in who you are with Jesus because he's designed us uh, in his image like him. So just state the fact like, you know what, I I'm a Christian and um, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God that he died for me. I'm not going to push it on you, and I'd really appreciate that you don't push it on me or push the fact that you don't believe. Now, make sure that they know, you know, it's okay to ask me questions about my faith and say, well, you know, I don't really believe that, you know, Jesus was, you know, that he came and he died, and, and you know, I don't believe that, you know, he's going to come back or something, you know. Can you explain what you believe? I mean, it'll open up good conversations and I think I wouldn't jump to conclusions and start start arguments or anything because I mean that's that's when you're going to be you know in the radar of a, a boss or somebody who's going to potentially cause problems and and uh, I mean it's just kind of the same for kids who are at school uh, you know make people know who you are and like you said before you can demonstrate the fact that you're a Christian you know if you're actual Christian and you have that relationship with the Lord, what do people think about you, and why do they think that about you? Now, it's not about us, obviously. It's about mirroring the image of Christ. So as we're walking through the halls or we're sitting at our desk or in our cubes at work, are people going to look at us and say, I know he's a Christian because, you know, he's never swearing. He's always positive. Attitude is everything. He's always got a positive attitude, or she's always got a positive attitude. You know, people generally aren't going to sit there and bash you and bash you and bash you. People will. There are individuals who will do that. But when you make a stance and you say, this is what I believe, I'm not going to push it on you and you're not going to push it on me. That's the line. And you don't have to, you know, tell somebody Bible verses all the time or pray for them all the time in the workplace for them to know that you're a Christian if you're really a Christian. Because it should show in your personality. It should show in your attitude. It should show how you address situations and how you react to problems and, and um, you know, when you fail, how you react to that failure or how do you react to your boss telling you you need to step it up a little bit and, you know, work a little better. You know, it's, it's all about your reaction and how your attitude is towards situations and towards people. If you're somebody who's always crabby and mad and angry, I mean, people aren't going to want to be like you. And if you say, I'm a Christian, and yet you turn around and you go and you talk about people and you gossip and you're cussing and, and you know, things like that, people don't want to be like you because either A, that's just not somebody that they want to be, or B, they do want to be like you because they think that you can go to heaven and and be a Christian and get saved once and then turn around and continue to sin and not care about it. Right. You know, I've, I've been addressed by, by higher up people and other churches around the area in the workplace, in other workplaces, in my previous jobs and stuff. And, oh yeah, I'm so-and-so from this church and, you know, Hey, you're looking at this stuff. Well, that's pretty crappy. And they're dropping swear words and F bombs and making, you know, inappropriate jokes. It's, you know, it kind of makes you think for a second, like, wow, I really need to be praying for this person. But that doesn't mean I need to call them out and yell at them and blah, 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 because it's just not what we do. Right. Yeah, it's about being leading by example more than leading by verbal or uh, visual education. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So let me ask you this, and this is more for those who um, 
are our believers who share similar faith to you and I, Casey, um, being in a workplace that isn't Christian based, isn't Christian grounded and being around those who don't necessarily share the same beliefs and have different attitudes. Maybe you're around people who have more negative attitudes or angry attitudes, or they just kind of are, you know, Oh, I do what I want in life. No big deal. I can do whatever. And I'm still fine. Do you find it hard to maintain that maturity and not fall into the temptations that might be placed in front of you? Um, you know, do you find it hard to maintain that faith while you're at work? Uh, to a point, I mean, everybody's going to struggle with it um, to some degree. Thankfully, I I'm really blessed, and God's blessed me with a really good job right now um, working in IT. And uh, I work with people who have positive attitudes and who are, you know, excited to be challenged and, um, you know, who are looking forward to solving problems. And um, so I'm you know, I'm blessed at that point where I don't really, you know, struggle with, you know, trying to fit in or, or, um, you know, just not being a mature Christian. Um, so I, I'm definitely blessed there. I know that in previous jobs, definitely you struggle with it. Like I used to, I used to work with some individuals and they were, they were always crabby and, you know, they never had good attitudes and they were never, never willing to really teach me how to be better at my job. And, and you try your best to fit in. You try your best for people to like you. So, you know, things feel better around the workplace. But, you know, it's it's tough. It's it's hard. But, you know, God's on our side. And, you know, we already won the battle. But, you know, always you always got to be ready to just have that, that game face on, you know, for God's kingdom. And be ready for the attacks of the enemy through temptations and trying to want to fit in and be liked and, um, but yeah, absolutely. It can be really difficult to hold that maturity. Um, but we all stumble and God's always there to forgive us and give us more chances if we really mean it. So, right. Definitely. And so is there anything that, and I asked Casey these questions for those who are listening, because, uh, we're in a little bit opposite situations where he is in a awesome workplace. I love hearing stories about stuff that goes on at his workplace, a very positive environment where I'm Outside of the studio and where I work full time, I'm in more of a uh, negative environment where it's a little bit harder to stay encouraged. I mean, we're we're short staffed. We are constantly running nonstop all the time because we're short staffed. So it's, you know, one individual is doing the work of two to three people in one day. And that where is it? It, 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 wears, it wears you out. It makes you tired. And so the negativity and the frustration builds. And so, you know, that's a good kind of a good balance um you know because for me it's it is very difficult to maintain that positivity in the workplace because i'm surrounded by so much negativity so much frustration um mm -hmm. and i'm someone who tends to i guess not as much anymore but i do tend to be naturally short-tempered um by little things where it's like everyone else in the world be like dude what's your problem but for me it's like it's little things that bug me and so I think that's a good contrast between, you know, you're, everyone's going to be in a different situation where you may be in a really positive environment or you may be in a really negative environment. It's really going to depend on where you are. And this leads up to the next question I have for you, Casey, is, is there any routine or suggestions that you would have for someone um, for what they can do to help them maintain that positivity during the workday, whether it's before work, during work, um, you know, any suggestions that you would have? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um you know, the moment you get out of bed, the first thing on your mind needs to be, wow, God, thank you for providing, you know, my bed that I slept well in, the shower I get to take this morning. And, you know, thank you for providing this job. And on your way to work, you know, just be thanking God for your coworkers, be thanking God for the people around you at work and the job and the money you make, because, you know, ultimately he's the one that has blessed you with it. And all glory and thanks goes to him. And, you know, just waking up even if you're crabby and tired and groggy and you don't want to go to work you know having that positive mindset and just thanking the lord for everything he's provided for you and you know you hear a lot when you're at work like coworkers who are oh yeah me and my wife are fighting or you know we're having a hard time providing the money for my child's daycare or you know things like that come up and as you grow relationships at work those are things that in that time on your way to work and 
even during the day, you know, just on your mind, you can be praying to the Lord and, and, you know, praying for that person and what they're going through and their situation. And as you pray for them and you pray for those people, even at work that are rude or mean to you, just being in prayer for them, it will begin to change your mindset and that maturity will grow and um, it'll be easier to stay positive. And even when things uh, like like stupid stuff does come up at work and you get in trouble for something or you did something wrong, you made a mistake, you know, you know, just being in prayer again, saying, Lord, just, you know, teach me, you know, how to to learn from this mistake and what I did and how I can be better and, you know, just bless me with the, the answers to the questions and the answers to the situations and constantly being in prayer is a is a really important in, in the Bible it tells us that we need to be in prayer at all times of the day and uh, you know fleshly that's really hard but it's not impossible that you know the first thing that comes to your mind needs to be the Lord and his blessings and positivity and as you wake up and you begin that habit it's just going to be awesome you know every morning I'm really thankful because on my way to work I go over a huge bridge and I'm driving towards the east, which is when the sun comes up in the morning. And, and I get the view of an amazing sunset every single or a sunrise every morning. <laughs> and I it's just awesome because I get to look over the huge bay and see nothing in the, you know, the distance besides big body of water and the sun just beaming over it. You know, that I'm really fortunate awesome. to have that. And just being thankful for what the Lord has pictured for you. And, you know, he, he put that sunset just so you got get to see it and it's beauty and, and just being ultimately positive and thankful for what the Lord has done for you. I mean, if you imagine just for a moment, like if, if anybody listening, you just, your job, just, you get, you get fired and you get told to go home. Think about everything that you're going to lose, you know, we can't all afford to just lose our jobs. Right. And the Lord's blessed us with that job. So we need to, you know, we need to go and work at our jobs as if we're working for the Lord. And, you know, if you're working for the Lord, are you going to be upset and mad and, and crabby? No, you're going to be happy. You're going to be excited and joyful to work for God. And you're going to make mistakes if you make a mistake for the Lord, you know, you're going to be kind of like, oh, well, dang it, I did that. But you know what? That's that's it. That's all you need. You know, get ready to learn. Get ready to figure out what you did wrong and how you can fix it and, you know, go forward with a positive attitude. Right. No, that's definitely some great advice, Casey. And actually, uh, that kind of ties in with some of the stuff that I discussed with Cody last week. Uh, at one point, he was talking about a book called The Five-Minute Journal, and I actually ended up uh, ordering one of these online. It was about $25, $26 after shipping, and I just got it yesterday, so I just started it today. And for those of you who haven't, didn't get the chance to listen to our last show, um, it's a journal that offers you the opportunity to uh, go into it for about five minutes in the morning and then five minutes before you go to bed. And in the morning section, it has a motivational quotes. Uh, this morning's for mine, it was, and suddenly you know it's time to start start something new and trust the magic of beginnings. And that's by Meister Eckhart. Eckhart, Eckhart I think I'm pronouncing that right, Eckhart. Um, and then the next thing it'll do is it asks you these different questions to kind of help you set in a, set you in a positive mood for the day. The first one is, what are you grateful for? And it gives you uh, blank space for you to list three things that you're grateful for from the moment you wake up. Uh, you know, it gives you a section for what would make today great and options to list for that. You know, what are your daily affirmations are, you know, what, what do you want to see change about yourself? And then in the evening section, it says, what are three amazing things that happened today? And I think that's awesome because it gives you the opportunity to kind of reflect on the blessings of the day and be grateful for the day. Even if you had bad elements today, there's always something good out of it. And then it also gives you a section for how could I have made today even better? And it, again, it gives you that opportunity to reflect and go, okay, I slipped up in this area, or maybe I could have responded a little bit better or worked a little bit harder. How can I change that for the next day? And I'm not saying you have to use the journal, but it definitely ties in with what Casey was saying, just waking up with that grateful heart, with that positive attitude, 
and just reflecting on what can what has God blessed you with that you can be grateful for for the day. And so I, I think that's awesome, Casey. That lines up with exactly what I started this morning. And it's awesome because I've actually heard the stuff from Casey before, because as I go through some of the negative situations at work and face some of those temptations and struggles to live a more worldly mentality, uh, Casey has been an incredible encourager to me to help me kind of stay on track. He's held me help, helped hold me accountable to continue to live that Christ-like life. And I know, Casey, you've definitely seen some of the struggles I've been through. You've been through struggles on your own. So I want to just mm-hmm. thank you for you know, having that heart to help others remain accountable. Yeah. I mean, all glory goes to God. It's, it's, uh, I've been through some life changing, uh, moments, you know, in the past couple months myself. And, and it's just, it's so important to just go forward being thankful and excited to work for the Lord every single day. You know, the one who's designed us and created us and made us so technical and, and uh i mean it's it's i've been encouraged by lots of other people and you know joy is something that the lord has given me uh so i like to just kind of spread it around like that one kid who's at a concert with a water bottle <laughs> and it's just you know it's it's what i love to do and uh, i'm really thankful too um and another thing that i want to mention is if you have like a really good relationship with the people at your workplace um, and a really good relationship with your boss. Um, take advantage of that when it comes to, you know, being able to just pray for people too. Um, I know when I, one of my other jobs that I worked at, I was also working in IT and, um, you know, I scheduled a meeting with the CEO and, um, you know, I, I went in there with confidence and I sat down in front of him and, um, at this point you know i didn't know him very well i didn't i didn't really uh get along with him really either and i sat down and i said you know what you know i feel like the lord's called me to pray for people and i said ultimately uh to the ceo i said ultimately i want your permission to be able to pray for people as i see fit you know as i walk through the hallways or through the shop or through the office area and I really just feel called to pray for somebody and if I ask them hey can I pray for you and they say yes I want your permission to be able to do that you know while I'm on the clock and he looked at me and he was just really confused he said you want to pray for people I said yeah and by no means um, was he walking a, 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 a good Christian life at the time and I said I really feel called to just pray for people and he said well, you know what you have my permission to pray for people while you're on the clock, um, obviously you're not taking up tons of time. And he says, if anybody has a problem with this, you tell them to come talk to me. <laughs> and I was just so taken back and surprised that he would have said anything like that. And, you know, sure enough, 10 minutes later, I'm praying healing for somebody's foot and their foot was healed in the workplace. And I started to keep track of everybody I was praying for and it was really cool. Um, And, uh, you know, at that point, I just kind of cared less what people thought about me. You know, as I was praying for people and I'm laying hands on their foot, somebody would walk past, you know, well, what are you doing? And they're making some silly comment. You know, you got to let that stuff go past you and not worry about it. Um, But, yeah, like I said, if you have that relationship with somebody who's higher up in in the business area at your workplace and, and, uh, you know, like I said, just take advantage of that. Be like, hey, can I can I pray for people? Can I do this? You know, if somebody says no, I, I'll walk away. I won't worry about it. You know, if the Lord's called you to do it, he wants you to do it. And if you have permission from somebody, you know, a boss or CEO or manager to be praying for people on the clock, you know, to a point where it's not taking up tons of time and money of the business, then, then I mean, you've got a good, clear shot to be really move, making the, the spirit of God move in the workplace and start to change lives and, you know, start a revival where you're at. So. Right. Oh, that, and that's awesome, Casey. I don't think I actually knew that. Um, so that's really cool. And, um, you know, another thing to add to what Casey was saying is for someone who's not used to going and praying for other people, whether it's in the workplace or out in public or anything like that, um, it can be very intimidating because there's that part of us that just immediately wants to be like, well, if I ask them if I could pray for them, what are they going to think of me? And from doing street ministry and just for praying for people in, in the church, 
Uh, one thing I've learned is the more often you do it, the easier it becomes. Because the more often you Absolutely. do it, the more you see that manifestation of the Holy Spirit and everything. And it's it's an incredible experience. Your boldness, your confidence, and your courage to step out and do everything will grow consistently the more often you just do it. And Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, that's kind of funny. I I literally just preached on that yesterday. <laughs> and, um, you know, stepping forward and being bold on who you are because the church is a building for you to to practice and have fellowship and learn to prepare yourself to go out in the real world and really do the tasks that God's called you to do. Praying for people in the church is really important. Mm -hmm. But going out and, like you said, doing street ministry – and praying for people at work, that's important, and God's called us to do it. So we aren't to sit back and stay back and worry about ourselves and worry about fitting in. You know, God's called us to step forward, be bold, and be praying and, and stuff. And when, you know, when that layman was was prayed over in the streets, you know, Paul didn't think, oh, man, I really wonder what all these people around me are going to think. They're going to think I'm a weirdo. No, he just, he did what God told him to do. He pointed at him. He used the authority in Jesus' name and said, get up and walk. And he got up and he started jumping around and, and you know, making it, making a scene for God's glory. And, you know, they just kept, they kept going. You need to have that boldness, that confidence. But if you're never praying for people, if you're never doing that, you're always going to be afraid. You're always going to be timid. And your relationship with the Lord isn't going to grow to the, that I could be and it's so important to really understand your identity in Christ and realize that he didn't design us to be liked by everybody he designed us in his image to do his will to glorify the kingdom and glorify his name and, and be changing people's lives and making disciples not not you know wearing the coolest clothes or the most expensive shirt or making the most money those are just benefits Right, no, definitely. He, he, it's it's working for the Lord. Like I said, at all times you're working for Him, so it's 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 really important thing to have on your mind too. Definitely, yeah. Because in the long run, and this can be hard to comprehend at first, but in the long run, the only opinion that we should really ever be worried about is the opinion of God. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you. I have been blessed in having a family that is very supportive in my ministry activities. I know Casey has the same support from his family and I, it's an incredible thing to have, but you may be in situations where your family may not support you. And they may be like, you're weird. You're strange. You're different. Why did you change? You know, in uh, for myself, I wasn't raised initially in a Christian home. We were, um, and we were considered Lutheran based, but we didn't really follow that either. We were more just living in the world. And that initial change, there was some family that didn't accept of it. And that can be a really hard thing because it'll hit you hard as uh, a big dose of rejection. I mean, it, it, it will hit you very hard. But in the long run, at the end of the day, you're still being a living example to your family um, and to your friends and to the people around you. So... Mm -hmm. You, I encourage everyone definitely focus on focus on how God is thinking of you, how what God's opinion is. You know, are you glorifying God in your acts and in your actions? And if you're doing that, you're on the right path. And it, it's not always going to be easy, but it's going to be incredibly rewarding. Yeah, absolutely. And as we pursue the Lord and pursue what He's called us to, He's going to continue to bless us. You know, you really can't stress enough the maturity level and building your relationship with the Lord. And as you do that more and more, and as you practice and as you go out into the real world and you actually walk the talk, you know, God's going to bless you and you're going to become more bold, more faithful and more trust in the Lord than you've ever have before. And it's going to be absolutely life changing when you step out into that boldness. Definitely it is. And if you happen to be uh, in the Green Bay, Brown County area, I would definitely encourage you um, if you guys are if anyone's interested in getting involved in uh, just kind of checking out what we're talking about or any sort of ministry opportunity, feel free to send the studio message. We are connected with a lot of different ministries in the area, and we would love to get you connected with where you feel God is leading you. Uh, I know that also as a studio, we are working on planning a couple events 
for whenever the weather decides to not be freezing cold anymore and stay like a consistent warm temperature. So uh, maybe in June. Yeah, roughly, you know, <laughs> for about a week and then we'll go back to really cold and hiding inside and no, it's not really that bad, but but yeah, so we're planning some events um, that will be stuff like street ministry or just opportunities to gather and fellowship with one another. And that may lead to opportunities to pray for others or just to get to know others and what their beliefs and um, you know where their faith is. And so I really encourage you guys to keep an eye open for that as well. So that's actually going to be the end of our podcast for today. Uh, I appreciate you coming on the show, Casey, and being a part of everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Yeah, definitely. And I am sure that Casey will be back on the podcast because I enjoy having Casey on the podcast. (laughs) Um, And for anyone who's interested in the five minute journal I brought up earlier, I will have a link in the description for it below. You also can find links to all of our social media channels and our website. Uh, Casey, is there any specific ministries or websites um, that you would like to share at all? Um, (laughs) I mean, not in a biased manner. (laughs) <laughs> well that I, that's fine Go, share share what you would like um uh, i mean there's there's tons of different places that you can go um i i, I actually do enjoy the the bible app on my iphone because you can start devotionals and stuff on there um but i mean not really online things i don't use a lot other than like blue letter bible or you know the bible app on my phone um more just books and and some other things like if you're struggling with you know that anger and that bitterness and and annoyance and not liking people you know a great book would be like the bait of satan or if you just have lots of questions and and you want biblical answers to them and you just have like subjects uh, there's a book out there called um touch points which basically is is a big index of questions and subjects that you can look up in the book and it'll give you a bunch of biblical answers to it and um those are two books i guess that i'd recommend or getting into devotionals is really important and just spending that time with the lord so otherwise on online things i don't really have a whole lot uh, i mean there's tons and tons of them out there uh google's a good one <laughs> to find them yeah you could find pretty much everything on google Cool. Well, again, thank you for being on the show, Casey. I really appreciate it and hope, look forward to seeing you again. Yeah, awesome. Thanks. All right, that's it for today, guys. Thank you again for listening. We share our episodes, or I should say we release our episodes every Monday. Next week, we might be trying something a little bit different, uh, but we'll keep you up to date on all of our social media. Again, you can find links to the descriptions for those. Find links in the description for those. I knew it wasn't saying that, right? Uh, down below. Thank you again, everyone, and be blessed.